Friday night in Houston, Art Howe and the Houston Astros host the Montreal Expos, and in the top of the first inning, that smile was wiped off of Howe's face as center fielder Craig Biggio misplayed the line drive of Dave Martinez. He turned it into a three-base error that scored Delano De Shields, making the score one to nothing Montreal. Martinez later scored on a sacrifice fly, so Montreal had two runs without benefit of a hit. In the bottom of the second inning, Biggio tried to make amends as he had a single to left center field that scored Wilson, making it 2-1 to one Montreal. Still in the bottom of the second inning, Franklin Stubbs hits a ground ball down to the second baseman, who flips to Zane Smith, but the run comes in to score. Caminiti scores, making it 2-2. Two to two. Mark Portugal had only allowed two hits in six and a third innings pitched, although he had allowed the two unearned runs. Here in the seventh inning, he strikes out Larry Walker, but later in the inning, Portugal pulled a muscle in his rib cage and had to leave the game. Then in the top of the eighth inning with Juan Augusto in in relief, Tim Raines hit a single to right center field. That scored Nixon, making the score 3-2 to two Montreal in the eighth. Tim Burke pitched two scoreless innings in relief to pick up his first save since May 27th. Here in the bottom of the ninth, he strikes out Franklin Stubbs for the second out of the inning, and then we'll see him getting Ken Oberkfell to ground out to second base to end the game. The final was 3-2 to two Montreal. The winner, Smith, is 6-7. and seven. The loser, Augusto, is 4-4, four and four, while Burke picks up his 12th save. The San Diego Padres fell to 1-9 and nine on their current 11-game road trip. They lost 4-2 to two to the St. Louis Cardinals, and the game shortened after seven innings because of rain. In the bottom of the first inning, Willie McGee gave the Cardinals a 1-0 lead. He picked up his 44th RBI in the year with a single to score Vince Coleman from second base. The Padres got both of their runs on one swing of the bat in the top of the third inning as Jack Clark picked up RBIs number 30 and 31 with a single to left field scoring Roberto Alomar and Gary Templeton. That put the Padres ahead briefly by a score of 2-1. to one. That lasted only until the bottom of the third inning when Pedro Guerrero picked up two RBIs as he took an Eric Schau pitch the other way. For a single, Tony Gwynn bobbled the ball, and Ozzie Smith and Willie McGee scored. RBI number 56 and 57 for Guerrero, and the Cardinals led it 3-2. Bob Tewksbury went five innings to pick up the victory, but he was forced to leave the game due to stiffness in the right side of his neck. He was relieved in the sixth inning by Tom Needenfuhr. Here he takes part in a nice play as Jose Akendo gets the deflection off his glove for the 1-4-3 play on Tom Lampkin. In the bottom of the sixth inning, Pedro Guerrero picked up his third RBI of the game with a solo home run to left field. Home run number 10 and RBI number 58 for Guerrero. That would make it 4-2 to two in the bottom of the sixth inning and close out the scoring. Pedro Guerrero, the offensive star for the Cardinals, with a solo home run and three RBIs. Later in the bottom of the sixth inning, Rich Rodriguez came in in relief for the Padres, and he slipped there trying to throw a pitch as he caught a spike, but luckily Tom Lampinger was able to jump out and make the catch. Moved to the top of the eighth inning with Jack Clark at bat. The rain started coming down so hard that the umpires called for a delay. They waited an hour and 58 minutes before calling it. Vince Coleman, remembering 1985 when the automatic tarp roller came out and caught his leg and injured him, so he made sure that that wouldn't happen again. By the time the tarp came up out of the ground, Coleman was safely in the dugout. They did bring out the tarp, but it didn't do much good as they waited an hour and 58 minutes before officially calling this after seven innings of play. Bob Tewksbury got the win. He's 5-2. and two. Top of the first, no score, one out and two on. The Major League home run leader Cecil Fielder at the plate against Texas starter Mike Jeffcoat. And Fielder adds to his total by taking this Jeffcoat pitch high and deep for a three-run home run to left field. He gives the Tigers a quick 3 to nothing lead. Home run number 31, RBI 78, 79, and 80 for Cecil Fielder. The Tigers would take a 4 to nothing lead on a Mike Heath Fielder's choice in the top of the second. Now in the top of the fourth with two outs and Darnell Coles on second base. Mike Heath would come through once again, singling the left field off of Texas reliever Jamie Moyer. Cole scores on a close play at the plate, and the Tigers now lead the Rangers 5 to nothing. Great play coming up here in the bottom of the fifth with one out and Jack Doherty on third base. Gino Petrali at the plate against Detroit starter Dan Petrie. Petrali lifts a fly ball in the left center field. Detroit center fielder Lloyd Mosby with a great sliding catch, but Doherty tags up and scores easily. Sacrifice fly for Gino Petrali, RBI number 13 on the season. 5-1 to one Detroit through five innings of play. In the top of the seventh with one out and two on, Gary Ward at bat against Jamie Moyer. He strokes a three-run home run deep to left field. It drives in Travis Fryman and Cecil Fielder in front of him. And that gives the Detroit Tigers an 8-1 to one lead over the Texas Rangers. For Gary Ward, home run number five and RBIs 25, 26, and 27 on the season. 
Tiger starter Dan Petrie, who is winless in his last seven starts, pitched a very strong ball game this evening. Moving back to the bottom of the fifth, he strikes out Pete Incavilia for the second out of the inning. Petrie went eight innings tonight. He allowed one run. It was earned on two hits. He struck out three, and he walked only one. Funny moment here in the eighth. Mike Heath goes over to catch this pop-up by Julio Franco near the dugout. He can't make it, and then he slips into the dugout. Luckily, the Texas Rangers are there to brace him. Paul Gibson came on to pitch the ninth for the Tigers. Here he gets Rafael Pamero to ground out 4-3 to three to end the ballgame. Detroit wins by the final of 8-1. to one. The winning pitcher is Dan Petrie. He's 7-6. Loser Mike Jeffcoat is 3-5. and five. Saturday night in Anaheim, the California Angels are hosting the Cleveland Indians, and Mike Walker of the Indians is looking for his first Major League win. Here in the bottom of the first inning, he strikes out Max Venable to end the inning. Then in the top of the third inning, we'll see Chuck Finley striking out Joel Skinner. Neither team had allowed a run at this point in the game. But later in the top of the third, it was Mitch Webster coming to the plate, and Webster hit a solo home run to left field. This is the seventh home run of the season for Webster, and it gives him 34 RBIs. So Cleveland had a one to nothing lead, but the lead did not last long, as in the bottom of the fourth inning, Venable came up and he hit a solo home run, tying the game. This shot goes to right field. It's the third home run of the season for Venable, and it gives him 12 RBIs, so the game was tied up at one. In the bottom of the sixth, there was another solo home run, this time Jack Howell of the Angels. He hits his sixth of the season. This goes out to center field. Howell has 18 RBIs for the season, and California had a 2-1 to one lead. They added a run on a bases-loaded walk in the sixth inning, and then Jesse Orozco walked Jack Howell with the bases loaded in the eighth inning to make the score 4-1 to one California. Still in the bottom of the eighth, Bill Schroeder hits a ground ball to short. The throw from Fermin to second is late, so Winfield scores on the fielder's choice, making the score 5-1 to one Angels. In the top of the ninth inning, Cleveland got one back as Candy Maldonado hit a solo shot to left field. His 15th of the season gives him 51 RBIs, and it makes the score 5-2 to two California. That turned out to be the final score. Here, Finley gets Snyder to ground out 6-4 to end it. Finley gets the win. He's 13-4. The loser was Walker. He's now 0-1. Once again, the final 5-2 to two Angels. 42 minutes by rain, but they finally got underway, and we pick up action in the bottom of the first with two outs and one on. Kevin Seitzer in second base. George Brett comes through. He rips a single into right field. Seitzer scores easily, and the Kansas City Royals lead early 1-0 against West Gardner and the Boston Red Sox. RBI number 37 on the season for George Brett. The Royals' lead would not last for long. The Red Sox would get on the scoreboard in the top of the second with one out. Mike Greenwell on third base. Tony Pena would lash this double in down the left field line. Greenwell will score easily. All this coming against Kansas City starter Pete Filson. This ties the game up at one all. RBI number 32 on the season for Tony Pena. Currently, it is one all in the second. In the top of the fifth is one out and Jody Reed on second base. Tim Naring will loop this single to center field. And that will drive in Reed. That will give the Boston Red Sox a 2-1 to one lead. RBI number three on the season for Tim Naring. On to the bottom of the fifth. Boston starter Wes Gardner pitching a strong ball game. Here he gets Jim Eisenreich looking at a call third strike to end the inning and get himself out of a jam. Gardner went seven and one-third innings tonight. He allowed one run on eight hits, and he struck out three. Unfortunately for Gardner, the Boston bullpen could not hold that lead. On to the bottom of the eighth with one out and George Brett on second base. Pat Tabler at bat against Boston reliever Jeff Reardon. And he lines one into left field that gets by Mike Greenwell and goes to the wall. Brett scores easily. It scored a double and an error on Greenwell. This ties the game up at two all. RBI number 14 on the season for Pat Tabler. One out later in the bottom of the eighth. Runners at first and third. Pitch hitter Mike McFarlane doubles to the wall in left field. Mike Greenwell almost makes a spectacular catch, but he can't hold on. Pinch runner Steve Jels and Jeff Schultz both score. Kansas City leads 4-2. to two. The Royals would beat the Red Sox by that final of 4-2. to two. The winning pitcher in relief is Steve Farr. He's 7-4. and four. The losing pitcher is Jeff Reardon. His record is now 3-3. Three and three. And Jeff Montgomery picked up save number 12. From County Stadium in Milwaukee, the tailgaters went home happy as the Milwaukee Brewers annihilated the Seattle Mariners by a final of 10-3. to three. The benefactor of all those offensive hits was Ron Robinson, who got the victory by going five innings, allowing only one run. There he strikes out Ken Griffey in the top of the first inning. Don Baylor in the Milwaukee dugout earlier in the day. He had an interview with the St. Louis Cardinals about their manager job. 
a great play here in the top of the third inning. Some great reflexes by Jim Gantner as the ball goes off the glove of a diving Greg Brock, and he flips it over to Ron Robinson, covering four of the nice three to four to one play. In the bottom of the fourth inning, Milwaukee got all the runs they needed as Gary Sheffield would pick up an RBI, his 44th on the year with a single to left field, scoring Mike Felder. That made it one to nothing Milwaukee. After a Dave Parker ground out made it 2 to nothing. Brewers still in the bottom of the fourth inning. Greg Vaughn, the offensive star for the Brewers, would make it 4 to nothing with a home run down the left field line. His ninth home run of the year, RBIs number 35 and 36, scoring Gary Sheffield. Vaughn was 3 for 4 for Milwaukee with a two home runs, a double, and six RBIs in the bottom of the sixth inning. Uh, B.J. Surhoff made it 7-1 to Milwaukee with a single up the middle. Two RBIs scoring Dave Parker and Greg Vaughn, his 29th and 30th on the year. That made it 7-1 to in the bottom of the sixth inning. Then in the top of the seventh inning, Greg Bradley would provide a little offense for the Mariners as he connected for a two-run homer to right field. His third home run in the year, RBIs number 21 and 22, scoring Omar Vizquel. But that would be it for Seattle as Greg Vaughn capped things off for the Brewers in the bottom of the seventh inning with his second home run of the game, a three-run shot. His second home run made it 10 to three Milwaukee in the bottom of the seventh inning. And that would be the final score as Randy Varis was the fifth pitcher for Milwaukee, but he got his first save on the year. He gets Ken Griffey to pop out ending the game. Robinson is four and one. The loser, Eric Hansen, fell to 10 and eight. On Saturday evening, a very unhappy looking Bobby Cox and his Atlanta Braves are at Shea Stadium in New York to take on the New York Mets in a game that was delayed almost an hour because of rain. The top of the first, no score, two outs and no on. Ron Gann at bat against New York starter Ron Darling. And Gann strokes a solo home run to left field. It's his 20th of the year, which is a career high. And that gives the Braves a quick one to nothing lead. RBI number 46 on the season for Ron Gann. In the bottom of the first with one out, runners at first and second. Daryl Strawberry rips a three-run home run to right field off of Atlanta starter Marty Clary. And just like that, the Mets now lead three to one. The Mets, the number one hitting home run team in the National League against the Atlanta Braves, who are second. Home run number 24 and RBIs 59, 60, and 61 for Daryl Strawberry. So we take a look at Bobby Cox's reaction to that home run by Daryl. In the bottom of the second, Bobby Cox wasn't too happy about this play. Marty Clary bunted one down to Howard Johnson. Johnson's throw was in the dirt. Magadan couldn't handle the one hopper. He bobbled the ball, and first base umpire Fred Brocklander called Clary out. Cox disagreed and was promptly ejected from the game by home plate umpire Mark Hirschbeck. In the top of the third, Mets star Ron Darling strikes out Jim Presley to end the inning. Darling went six innings tonight, he allowed two runs, both of them earned on six hits. He walked one while striking out six. Strong outing for the struggling Ron Darling. Mets took a 4-1 to lead on a Dave Maggot and sacrifice fly in the bottom of the fifth. Now in the top of the sixth, Jim Presley would lead off the inning against Darling with a solo home run deep to left field. It would make the score 4-2 to New York. Home run number 15 and RBI number 51 on the season for Jim Presley. Moving on to the top of the ninth, John Franco would come on to pitch for the New York Mets. And here he gets pinch hitter Greg Olson to strike out to end the ball game. That's Franco's second strikeout of the inning. And Franco earns his National League leading 21st save. Mets defeat the Braves by the final score of 4-2. The winning pitcher is Ron Darling. His record is now 3-5. Losing pitcher is Marty Clary. His record falls to 1-7.